This is Hyundai's Ioniq 5, a mid-size SUV that has won numerous awards with thanks to some clever features, looks and finish that make it THE car to beat. In this review, I'm going to share with you why it deserves these accolades, how it performs, a few issues I found and whether or not its price tag is justified. Find out more right after this. The Ioniq 5 is a head turner. No matter where I park this car, people will come up and ask me, what is that? And I tell them it's a Hyundai and they go, get out of here. Are you, are you for real? That's amazing, look at it. It's futuristic. It looks kind of like Battlestar Galactica meets Star Trek meets Star Wars. That 8, 16 bit graphic with what they call pixel lights. I love it. Do you like it? it I know it looks as subjective, but this is just, I don't know, it's designed at a whole new level. These are what Hyundai call parametric pixel headlights. They're actually LED projector headlights, but the detail in them is extraordinary. Is it needed? No. Does it look great? Yes. Adding to that futuristic look is this light guide, which runs along the entire front bumper. The headlights are auto with auto high beam. To get this design where it's a continuous bonnet, which Hyundai calls a clamshell bonnet. It adds to that chunky, beefy look of the car. The long range single variant is $77,297 drive away, or this one, the all wheel drive long range, is $81,465.10. These are the active cooling vents and they open and close to assist with cooling the car, be it with the air con, let's say the coolant for the battery system. When I did my Raptor supercharging session, these open up, the fan went absolutely crazy loud and you could see it working. Other times, it's almost like it's breathing. As a driver, you don't get to see that, but pedestrians around you will. Under that bonnet is a frunk and unfortunately in the all wheel drive model, you only get a 24 litre version. If you get the single drive, that is to say the rear motor one, this actually increases to 57 litres. The Ionic 5 features four massive tyres and I'll get to riding handy later on the video but these Michelin Pilot Sports are 20 inches and the design, uh, not so much to my taste, a little bit busy of anything. I've cleaned them in preparation for this video and they're not too hard to clean so that's good but uh, I, I, I would much rather perhaps uh, not sporty tyres because yeah, you'll, you'll learn why soon. The side profile of the Hyundai Ioniq 5, I think, is very successful. It looks sedan-like, but <laughs> rest assured, it is definitely not. It is actually a mid-size SUV, so that flat roof is actually tall. It's like 1,605mm tall. Its width is 1,840mm, but its length is 4,635mm, which is 11.5cm shorter than the Tesla Model Y. But this actually has a longer wheelbase at 3 meters compared to the 2.9 of the Model Y. Where you're gonna see that the most is actually in the interior, which we'll get to in a second. Now, these mirrors, they have got one of many cameras around this car, which provides this awesome view. All around the Ionic 5, you've got a suite of sensors to help with that 360 camera view. The auto presenting handles, I really like. Unlike other cars where you've got to sort of push in and then pull out, this one is already there for you to grab and open. It's a nice touch and I really do appreciate it. To lock it, it's a little square in here, you just press it and it locks. Coming to the back of the Ionic 5 and here's where it gets complicated because it's, well, very busy. Starting up top, you've got a nice little spoiler where it's got some air, uh, exit points and that supposedly helps push rain and stuff down the back windscreen. Is it an issue? I've only used it in the rain once, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Top and center, you've got the Hyundai logo, the Ionic 5, and just for those who don't know, this is also the Ionic 5 with New South Wales plates. The matrix light scheme returns, coming down to yet another line, then another line. You get the idea. There's contrast here. And for me, it's a little bit too busy, but conversely, I think the design language they're going for is one of sophistication, complexity, and something that kind of confuses the eye as to, wow, it's a, it's a hatchback, it's a sedan, I, I don't know, but 
I do like it. With the boot with the seats up, there's 527 litres of space, and with the seats down, that increases to 1,587. You've got four tie-down points, a net to keep things in place, and a removable boot cover to stop naughty eyes from looking inside your boot. For a mid-size SUV, I think this boot space perhaps should be larger. They've basically given that three meter wheelbase, or the space rather, to the interior passengers, which is lovely. But I think people buy SUVs because they want to go to Bunnings or to Ikea and transport stuff. And the space in this is kind of limited. On the floor, there's not exactly a lot of space here. That is the subwoofer. There's a little bit of space on the side here, and that's it. No spare wheel, you've got a run flat kit. Uh, it's a little bit of a miss, isn't it? I'm gonna try my hardest to not use the word beautiful, posh, nice, all those sort of things because, well, it's gonna be really hard, okay? Recalling what I said earlier around the boot space may be a little bit too small for a mid-size SUV. Well, space has been given to this awesome, gorgeous, beautiful interior. See, there I go. Sorry, not sorry. The front seat is in my position, I'm five foot 10, and knee room is plentiful. Underfoot, not too bad, but I like my seat low. If you have a seat high, it's a lot better. Head height, heaps of head height. And you've got this wonderful panoramic glass roof. In a moment, I'll get to the front seat where we talk about this center console. And right now it's in the rearmost position. You've got two USB ports down here, which are USB-A. Mm, okay, 2022, maybe it's time for USB-C. In the B pillar, you've got vents for the rear seat passengers, which is actually a clever move because as the center console can go forward and backwards, so too might the ventilation with it. And if it's a hot stinking day, yeah, you, you don't want that. So I think it's very clever. For those who like to stuff things in places maybe they shouldn't be stuffed, there is a very convenient net back here. The rear seats are electric in that they can move forwards. Ooh, okay, getting a bit close here. And by doing that, you're obviously gonna increase the capacity in the boot. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, it's crazy tight. Or they can go all the way back benefit of doing this is that these seats can actually recline to five different positions. So much so, it's like you're lounging about or maybe appreciating the lovely sky and life in general. Okay, sorry. I fell asleep there. Why? Because I had the rear seat heat warmers on, which you can control very conveniently by this little button. And finishing off what I think is an absolutely delightful, well-executed rear seat is this button here, which controls this front seat. Why do you need to do that? <laughs> Let's find out. Both front seats are electrically operated and feature no less than 10, maybe even 12 different adjustments, like forwards, backwards, up, down, rear recline, lumbar support, in and out. And the party trick, which uh, might upset your neighbors behind you, is this. I should do the Royal Wave, shouldn't I? Oh, gosh. Oh, the serenity. This, by the way, is one of six color combinations that you can have. And these seats are leather, heated, ventilated, and my gosh, this position. Who, uh, to the designers who thought of this, thank you. Honest to goodness, thank you. All right, no more time for dibby daddling. I need to get on with this review. Okay, finishing off our beautiful front interior is a glove compartment that is a glove drawer okay but very accessible large up front you've got four vents at the back you've obviously got the two cup holders you've got two in the back two between both passengers in the rear and one in each door giving you a total of eight sun visors are okay size you've got the hideaway mirror with an incandescent light what sacrilegious the interior of this thing at night time is gorgeous you can actually see things. We've reading light, dome light, rear lights. They're all here, but it's kind of weird. You've got incandescent bulbs for the vanities. USB sockets up the front. There's three of them, including a Qi wireless charging point. 
The HVAC system is done through this capacitative touch screen and you've got dual zone climate control with this awesome feature where you've got auto level one, two or three. And essentially it's kind of like if you're the sort of person who likes to get in the car and wants it at temperature ASAP, you punch it up to three and it's going to blast that air, either heat or cool the cabin and get it to the right sweet spot quickly. Conversely, if you hate sound and you hate the feel of the air on you, you whack it right down to level one and it's nice and whisper quiet. The infotainment system is a generation five model, which you might have seen in other Hyundais and Kias. This summary screen with temperature, current preset, battery and location is well executed. You can swipe over where you've got your main functions like getting to your electric vehicle, where you can see your battery remaining, the nearest charging point, how many kilometers of range you have with or without the aircon on, doing a time charge so your battery has a predetermined state when you're ready to depart, what temperature you're likely to be on, and vehicle to load, which again, we'll talk about later. You can set your charging limits independently for DC fast charging or AC slow charging. It's got built-in maps and navigation, which is pretty good. Telephone, a fun little feature where you can record up to 70 minutes of voice memos for yourself or other people, but I don't know why you'd do that. Climate control settings, which is kind of a duplication of the buttons below, but actually there's a few more features in here, such as turning on and off sync, air conditioner, where the air is directed, temperature settings, and deeper level settings, such as activation on washer fluid use, and smart ventilation, which is absolutely brilliant by the way. You can set it to say, hey, when you hit this cabin or cool this cabin, I want you to do the same to my seat. So you get this lovely cool feeling through your bum and your back and even on your lower legs. Yeah, it's brilliant. No hot sticky seats in summer. No, no siree. You can also control the rear climate in the car. So it's a three zone climate control system basically. You've got DAB radio, FM, AM, memory seat configuration, which is in addition to the two buttons over there for the driver. So if you wanna have, let's say a cleaning mode, you can set up mode one. You wanna actually uh, clean the rear seats. You might wanna set number two. You get the idea. You've got quiet mode, whereby it actually reduces the volume to 25%, only enables it in the front. And yeah, again, clever. Between the infotainment system and the HVAC are shortcuts to your parking sensors, cameras, changing the station up and down, map and navigation buttons seem to be duplicated and I don't understand why you actually have both of them. The driver's seat is excellent. Very customizable and adjustable. Voice assistant with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Changing your mode of your stereo. Shortcut to your favorite app or telephone. Change the screen display in front of you, which cycles through compass direction you've got, where the electricity is flowing through the car. A basic version of a screen, which I actually think you should use this one, showing you your trip distance, your kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, the amount of time you spend on a drive, how much power is going to the motors or being regenerated back into the battery, your speed, your state of charge, odometer, and some other stuff at the top here. Thankfully, Hyundai has addressed the cruise control issue that I've had in other cars. By pressing this, it engages cruise control and then you can actually speed up or slow down using this little toggle. If you wanna change your follow distance because it is radar cruise control, you just press this button a few times to go through one or four distances. Lane centering is enabled through this and I'll get to that later on. You've got an indicator stalk and light stalk, wiper control, all of which are automatic, mind you. A drive select mode where you can cycle between normal, sport or eco. And an additional one for those who live in snowy climates, snow. And finally, the one that seems to be forgotten and I think perhaps poorly executed is this stick where you put your foot on the brake, circle it forward to get into drive or roll it backwards to go into reverse, press a button in to engage park. But once again, it doesn't actually engage the true park brake, like a hand brake, no. You've got to do it down here through this little uh, little toggle. Uh, why? Why Hyundai? Can, can someone please fix it? Every, again, every car I've driven in the last five years, I'm saying this in most reviews I feel, I've had it in every car I've had for the last five years, where if I press P, I mean park, handbrake, don't make the car rock when you get out of it, and it's suggesting that, hey, you've actually you know buggered up here. At night, this cabin is stunning. The LED lighting is subtle and beautiful. When you change your drive mode, those colors of blue, red, and green 
can also be reflected in the colour within the car. You can of course select any colour you like, but I actually like the fun of it. Accelerator and brake are made from a metal alloy and they've got a little fun plus and negative as in like a battery. And for the driver, they've got full control over all the windows, mirrors, and one and two driving presets for the seat. Up top, you've got light controls for the entire cabin, as well as a rocker to close and open the sunshade. The rear view mirror is auto dimming, and the side mirrors have warnings to let you know there might be someone in your blind spot. Most people would charge the Ionic 5 at home, and on board it's got a 10.5 kilowatt charger. It comes with a 10 amp EVSC slow charger, which is great and will fill you up about 10 kilometers per hour every night. The rated range of the Ionic 5 is 430 kilometers for the dual motor or 451 for the single motor. The difference is because of the weight of that additional motor. Both batteries are identical at 72.6 kilowatt hours and its rated efficiency is 17.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. In the week I had the car, I got 17 kilowatt hours per 100 k's, meaning it's at least 450 kilometers of real world range. When it comes to DC fast charging, the Ionic 5 has a feature that very few other electric cars have in the market, and that is to be able to accept an ultra rapid charge up to 350 kilowatts. The Porsche Taycan has it, and well, not many others to memory. So we're gonna test this out because I've got the battery now to 10%, and I've done so by actually just recharging on Friday, and today is Tuesday, and I've done almost 430 kilometers on that one charge. I reckon let's get it on because this is gonna add 100 kilometers of range in five minutes flat, and it's gonna go from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. Let's see how accurate that is. Ultra rapid charging session done, and it did it. 18 minutes, it went from 10% to 80%, and added almost 300 kilometers of range in that time. So that's mighty impressive. Uh, it didn't get the 100 kilometers in five minutes though, that was a bit of a fail. But it, what happened was I think that the battery wasn't warm enough, so it warmed it up. And then the amperage went up, also the, um, the kilovolts went up, and I think we peaked around 220. Um, this is 350 maximum, it supposedly can accept 350, but I never ever saw that. Being the long range all wheel drive model, is this good for road tripping? Absolutely. Uh, well done to Hyundai, and uh, I love to see this 800 volt architecture on all EVs moving forward, because uh, yeah, the people who have got uh, the range anxiety, it's not a theme, or complain about, oh geez, you know, I've got to actually stop and get some um, you know, electricity every few hours. Nah, you could easily do at least 300 kilometers in this car, uh, what, three hours of driving in Australia basically, before you need to actually charge and get the next um, you know, little bit of range into your car. But when you're doing that, you're going to do your toilet break, you're going to maybe get a little bite to eat, and by the time you've done, done those two things, it's ready to go again. It's a no-brainer. At speed, the Ionic 5 is pretty quiet-ish. I think those 20 inch wheels are contributing to probably the majority of the sound I'm hearing in this car. Wind noise is very minimal, um, in fact excellent. I'm getting nothing around the mirrors, windscreen, even side. I, I, I'll put on the screen if it's actually that special laminate glass because it's, uh, it's pretty quiet in here. I'm currently doing 80 k's per hour and uh, I'm speaking up just so the microphone can pick it up. But if I was having a conversation, I wouldn't be speaking this loud. The radar cruise control, as well as lane centering, do an excellent job. You could take your hands off the wheel if you wanted to, but don't. Uh, it's very good at nagging you. In fact, you know what? I keep my hand typically down in the, uh, what, six, seven o'clock position, and quite frequently it says, are you there? And it's like, yes, I'm here. Stop it. I'm here, I'm paying attention, I'm holding the wheel. Uh, but nonetheless, it's definitely one of the better systems out there. Is it Tesla Autopilot? No, definitely not. It's good at doing highway speeds. In fact, you need to be 60 k's per hour or higher to enable the system. But if the corner is too sharp, you would definitely get over it towards the edge and uh, that's not a good idea. I'm doing 100 kilometers per hour now and wind noise has definitely picked up around about the A pillars. Road noise once again coming through the tyres and I've opened the roof 
uh, just to see if I can hear something up there and I do believe there is some noise coming from that way as well. Compared to a petrol diesel car with an engine up front, this is a lot quieter and uh, I guess you're a bit more conscious of those sounds because there's no engine making a racket up the front, perhaps drowning out everything and your environment and the people in the car. So uh, again, it's still a very lovely experience. Being an electric vehicle, getting around traffic and zipping into and out of spaces that are maybe a little bit challenging for some legacy cars, read petrol diesel things, uh, is not a drama in this car. It gets up and it gets going promptly. Three, two, one. Whoa! And a hundred. Whoa! Gosh! 5.2 seconds. I don't know it was quite that fast, but that felt plenty fast. That was insane. That, I'll be curious to see in the playback, <laughs> one, what my expression was like, and two, whether or not that was actually faster than 5.2 seconds, I don't know. It, it felt plenty fast. I, I was getting pushed, did you see what happened to my head? Anyway, um, performance on the all wheel drive model is great and Honestly, the difference between the two price-wise, I think go for this one because it's a lot more fun and only a little bit more money. To drive the Ionic 5, you put your foot on the brake and you use this little lever here to the right. You press it forwards to go to drive and you roll it backwards to go to reverse. The reverse camera is actually really good quality, thank goodness. And it's got this awesome 360 degree um, view. So you can actually um, tap on the screen, and you can actually rotate all the way around and check out to see, oh, am I close to that? Am I okay? You've also got this top down, what I call God view. Again, it helps you line up in, let's say, uh, parallel parking spaces. People have criticized this stick as being a little bit clunky and awkward. And I must say, I was a bit confused at first and I kept on pressing it forwards to go, well, reverse and vice versa. And it would tell you quite cruelly, hey, you're actually already in that gear, you already got that selected. You're like, whoa, okay, okay, geez, don't take offense here. Uh, but um, again, because you've got this console in the center, uh, there's nowhere else for it to go. Um, perhaps you could maybe have buttons on the dash to do that, but then you're losing some real estate to get more buttons. Um, it's, it's, it's something you will get used to. And I wouldn't call it a criticism, it's just what it is, what it is. So let's start driving and I'll talk to you about what it's like to drive the Ionic 5. Thankfully, you've got the return of the I pedal, and to change that again with the pedals, you can either increase it, go up to level 4, I'm going to call it now, so that's your I pedal mode, or you use the right pedal to go down all the way to level 0. Level zero is much like a petrol engine gearbox sort of setup, whereby, you know, if you put your foot into the clutch and you, the car will just coast if you're at speed, same to here. The car's actually using energy to do this, mind you. And I'll just remind viewers, what do we do? We use regen, absolutely. And on this one, you can go up to level four. So using the left pedal, I'm gonna go up, two, three, four, and there we go. We've got eye pedal mode, and it works brilliantly, blending at the very end, brakes but then recuperating the energy as it gets as, as it slows down the car so if i stop there we go we come to a complete stop meaning the auto hold button kind of becomes redundant because i would highly recommend eye pedal mode to anybody one pedal driving it's like driving a dodgem car and you have fun with it in that you make a bit of a competition can i get to and from work or to the shops or to school pickup by just using that one pedal and never touching the brake yeah it's a real game changer and for people who haven't uh, experienced it i highly recommend get out into the ionic 5 give it a go and your mind will be blown you'll be thinking to yourself why have I been putting out with that terrible petrol experience all these years? The Ionic 5's ride and handling is actually quite nice. I've read reviews from car critics who criticised it at highway and freeway speeds, saying that it was a little bit unrefined, 
uh, over undulating surfaces, which we typically get in Australia. And my experience and people who have actually been in the car with me disagree. They think it's actually firmly planted. It's got very minimal body roll whatsoever. And what I think is contributing to that is not the McPherson struts at the front or multi link to the back. No, I think it's a two and a half ton that this car weighs. Yeah, it's a very heavy vehicle. Whatever they've done to suspension here with the coils and dampness and all that stuff that I don't really truly understand to be honest. I'm just very subjective here. This is a review from someone who has been fortunate enough to drive a lot of cars, particularly a lot of electric cars. And I think that this is right up there. It handles better than the Tesla Model 3. Uh, but again, the litmus test here is not gonna be that car. No, I need to stop doing that. It's gonna be the Model Y. When that car gets out here, that's where we need to actually really test it. The seating position is actually quite high, commanding, you can see quite well. And visibility out the front is great. Sides, good. You've got the mirrors very clearly visible, they're nice and large. And visibility out the rear view mirror, which is auto dimming, is actually quite good. Nice and large, and I've got no qualms about visibility in this car. The safety suite on the Ionic 5 is extensive and I, if you throw any acronym at me, I guarantee you have it. In fact, I'll put them all on screen now. This might take a while, but the thing that surprised me that I wasn't prepared for was when I was reversing into a parking spot, I was very certain I was able to keep going like I was, but the car disagreed with me and it slammed the brakes on for me. The satellite navigation system in the Ionic 5 is pretty good, it's zippy, it's fast, they've got shortcuts to commonly use things like rapid charging. Uh, but one of the dislikes I have with the Ionic 5 is that from where I'm seated, and I'm short, I'm only like 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10, it's a bit of a reach over to where that far screen is. And the controls are basically on the left side of the screen and to the bottom. And if you're taller than me, you're going to be further back from the pedals, ergo, you're going to be further away from that screen. So, um, yeah, look, I think it's only a little reach and I'm being petty here, but I think you just, you should, de you definitely should know that because compared to, let's say the model three and Y with the large center screen, that's a little bit more forwards. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just something to note. And finally, one of the huge features that very few other cars in the world have is this, vehicle to load. With this handy little adapter, you plug it into your charging port, plug in a power board, several devices, wham, bam, and thank you, Hyundai Ioniq 5. Look at this. I've got a TV going, I've got a fan. It's a nice balmy night, it's like 29 degrees, lovely. I boiled the kettle before because my missus wanted a coffee, go figure, and I thought I'd make myself a nice little bit of bread. All from this car, 240 volts, 15 amps, 3.6 kilowatts of power. This car could keep doing this for essentially ooh, 20, 25 hours if you had a full battery. Imagine, imagine camping for this car. It's a real game changer. And this is it, this car is a game changer. It's unlike anything else. It's next generation. It's looks, feel, luxury, sumptuous, high-end, superb, defies the brand and a new high for Hyundai. I can't stress this enough. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 has the looks to change the game for all car makers. People will be copying this car in the future. It's classy interior, is like a lounge room on wheels. It's ride and handling, I think is great. It accelerates crazy fast. You get 420, 450 kilometers out of it easily. There's a few party tricks here, like remote forward and backwards, the zero gravity positioning seat thing, and a size and price that I actually think will do quite well. Presently, we only have the Kia EV6 and who knows when we'll ever get the Model Y. And so for those who are looking for a mainstream car, there's very little to dislike in this car. Sure, I reckon the boot book could be bigger. The front is also a bit of a missed opportunity, but if you get the rear wheel drive model, not only will you get more range, but also you get a bigger front. And that is it. It's an extremely short list. 
If I was to give you any other things, I'd be literally nitpicking. It's very hard to fault this car and I can understand why it has won so many awards. It is going to be the car that all others are going to be judged against. So, did you enjoy the video? If you watched it now, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you have, maybe give me a subscribe. I've got a lot of awesome content coming up. And if you want to see behind the scenes content, join me over here on Patreon where you get all this and a lot more from as little as $2.50 per month. And as for always, you be good and you be green.